This is an introduction to the rules and it gives you an idea of the basics. It's a simple explanation of the actions required by, the vessel, by all vessels by the international regulations for the prevention of collisions at sea. They can be complicated, we're looking at it in a simple version. So the rules apply to all vessels at sea, including power-driven vessels, boats, ships, sailing yachts, dinghies, kayaks and rowing boats. These are the icons we're going to use in the video to describe the different categories of boats. So we're going to cover the actions to avoid a collision for crossing situation. This one is the head-on situation and this one is the overtaking situation. Regarding the priorities of vessels, here you can see the different kinds of vessels. We'll talk about those in detail later on. So we're going to discuss who is the stand-on vessel, which is this one, and who is the give-way vessel, which is this one, and what each must do. They all have duties. So who do the rules apply to? The International Regulation for Prevention of Collisions at Sea are international. They operate on the high seas and connected waterways and adopted by many harbours under their bylaws. They apply to big vessels and they apply to small vessels. Once again, here's our little icons that we're going to use. Everybody has a responsibility. Everybody has duties under the regulations. So let's look at the giveaway vessel and the stand-on vessel. What do these terms mean? Well, the giveaway vessel takes avoiding action. It should be early and substantial so as to be readily apparent to other vessels. For example, if you're watching another vessel, which is the giveaway vessel, you can see green light becomes a red light as she alters course and passes to pass astern of you. However, the stand-on vessel must maintain course and speed unless it becomes apparent that avoiding action is required. Nobody has right of way, everybody has a duty. So let's look at the risk of collision and the close quarters situations that might be developing. There are three main ones that we look at. This one is the crossing situation. This is the head-on situation. And this is the overtaking situation. Overtaking one vessel is going faster than the other and approaching from behind. So as captain or master or person in charge of a vessel, what are your duties? Well, in a crossing situation, you should first establish if a close quarters situation is developing. If it is, you should take early and substantial action to avoid collision. And then resume your track. For the head-on situation, both vessels are the giveaway vessels, so both have to do something. And what they do is alter to starboard, and when they're past each other, they resume their course. For an overtaking situation, any vessel who is overtaking the other is the giveaway vessel. This could be a sail vessel or a power vessel. Overtaking means you're approaching from behind, which means you can't see the coloured side lights, only the stern light. You can alter either side, but generally starboard is a better option. So we also have to remember that in an overtaking situation, the giveaway vessel remains the giveaway vessel until finally passed and clear. So you can see here, this vessel's overtaking, she's gone to starboard, which is good, but then she tried to be tricky and alter course to cross in front of the other one, which is not allowed. How do we determine if there is a chance of collision? So when we look at, is there a chance of collision? We have to say, is there risk of collision? Is there risk of a close quarters situation? Is there a risk that it might go wrong? So what are we going to do? We're going to determine the risk of collision. So if a compass bearing of the other vessel remains steady or nearly steady and the distance is reducing, then we're going to consider there is a risk of collision or a close quarters situation. So therefore we must assume there is a risk of collision and take the avoiding action. Let's look at the priorities. Who keeps out of the way of who? This is on, out at sea in open waters. 
So we look at a power-driven vessel, we abbreviate that to PDV quite often. We look at sailing vessels, and remember a sailing vessel is only a sailing vessel if they're not being propelled by machinery. If they switch their engine on and use it, then they're considered to be a power-driven vessel. We look at fishing vessels, this can be trawlers or other fishing, such as laying lobster pots or long drifting nets. Because of the gear they have in the water and the way they're connected to the seabed with that gear, they can't easily move out of the way of other vessels. We'll look at restricted by work, which is restricted in ability to maneuver. They could be laying a gas pipeline, uh, electricity cable, communication cable, working with divers, or maintaining navigation buoys. Because of what they're doing, they can't easily let go and get out of your way. We'll look at vessels constrained by their draft. Because they're very deep in relation to the available depths of water, they can't easily move out of the way or deviate from their course. And we'll look at vessels not under command. For some reason, they can't control the boat, so you have to keep out of their way. Could be their steering's not working, could be the engine control's not working. So let's look at a power-driven vessel. Who does a power-driven vessel keep out of the way of? Well, power-driven vessels keep out of the way of pretty much everybody that's got some form of restriction. Next one on the line is, uh, is the sailing boat. Sailing boats keep out of the way of everybody else, which is fishing boats, restricted in ability to manoeuvre, and vessels not under command. Remember, not under command means they can't get out of your way. Fishing boats, as much as possible, they will keep out of the way of vessels restricted in their ability to manoeuvre, and of course, vessels not under command or not under control. We'll now look at the special case of vessels constrained by their draft and vessels operating in narrow channels. You can see this big vessel here. She can only stay in the middle of the channel that's marked with the port and the starboard buoys. You've got a, a cylinder during the day and three red lights in a vertical line at night. And sailing vessels must keep out of the way and also power driven vessels less than 20 meters should keep out of the way. Let's have a quick recap and look at some top tips. Let's look at the crossing situation. You can see here's the stand on vessel to the right and a give way vessel. The give way vessel is altering course in lots of time and she's going to pass astern or behind the, the stand on vessel. So what we're going to do if the giveaway vessel doesn't do enough to avoid a collision? Well, we'll sound five short blasts or five or more short blasts, alter away from the offending vessel and maintain a course and speed. And when we're safe to do so, probably come round to starboard and pass behind the giveaway vessel. We don't know what problems they have on board. The main thing is avoid a collision. A collision at sea can ruin your whole day. Now let's look at the head-on situation. Remember both are giveaway vessels, both altered to starboard. Once they're past each other, they resume their course. Now let's look at the overtake overtaking situation. It seems pretty easy. Alter course to starboard and overtake. This is if you're a power boat or a sailboat. Remember that sailing boats can sometimes go faster than power boats. And in an overtake, overtaking situation, the overtaking vessel is the giveaway vessel, power or sail. So we've said it's better to alter to starboard because you don't know if there's another vessel going to get involved in this. And if it did, it might not be so easy for you to keep out of the way. So go to starboard, it's normally the safer option. So if you don't alter course to starboard, if you come round to port and there's somebody coming towards you, you're in a head-on situation and what are you going to do? You have to turn to starboard, that's where all the sea room is. So it's just easier to alter to starboard in the first place. Keep your starboard side clear, as they say. So let's look at the top tips. Keep a good lookout. 
have good situational awareness, generally alter to starboard, don't be afraid to slow down and buy more thinking time. If there are lights all over the place, just head for the dark bits, assume it's safe to do so. Check your navigation. Thank you for watching, be safe and enjoy.